But this is how the finished product will look on top of the clock. Uh, uh, inside here, his foot is behind the big wheel, and this hammer um, still is able to raise up high enough on the snail. So there you have it. This molding video will be broken into two parts. One's going to be the silicone jacket, and the second is going to be the uh, mother mold. But then in the subsequent video, uh, it should be the fourth part of this long series of this clock sculpture. Um, it'll be part four. It'll be this completed uh, on top of this clock installed in my home. So this is where we're at. What a joy. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. This is a preview. Stick around. Hit subscribe so you know. Please hit the like button and subscribe and select all notifications. Thanks guys. And be sure to check out the product description below for the materials that uh, went into making this clock. Okay, take care. Okay, back to work. Back to work. <clears throat> so this is prepped for the next wall here. Uh, what I want to point out is that I filled in this cavity with some of the clay. I use an oil-based clay. That's acceptable. Water-based clay is great if it's uh, still wet, like fresh out of the bag, because it tends to uh, adhere to the silicone a little better. But if it dries, it'll shrink and, of course, fall right off. Uh, but anyway, I went ahead and plugged this hole. I feel like that structure is going to be strong enough to support itself without needing a plug inside. And of course, that's easily uh, rectified if that doesn't work out. Um, I built a wall here and brought it down because I didn't want to try and uh, do cards, the business cards, the way that I did around here. Uh, and that led me to another line of thinking. So this section is going to pull off like this. This is obviously the perimeter. Um, I looked at it from the angle I wanted to pull it off and then just took this and dotted it uh, and then double checked it because you can hold it perpendicular and then drag it a line like this and see exactly where that high ridge is going to fall. Um, after I decided that line was good, um, I considered would this third section come off on its own? You know, once this is off, will that come off? And I'm pretty happy with it. So I just filled in that area just to make sure that it wasn't going too far under. And if I have to uh, put some clay underneath here to help block that out so this looks like it might come free a little more easily, I'll do that. As long as I can pretty much get the mother mold to, to hold around it a little bit on the back to cradle this to make sure that doesn't move uh, during you know the casting, I'll be happy. So this is a technique I learned, but it's normally done with straight pins. I don't have straight pins on hand that I know of. So I use paneling nails. I just push them through the jacket, and then you take uh, your clay, and you'll see, um, so you roll a coil, and then you pinch it on here, and you make a wall. So you'll make a wall of clay and then it'll end up looking like this. So instead of using cards, I just decided to use clay, and these come out, and that hole will seal up. So this, when this punctures, it'll push the silicone apart, pull it out, closes back up, it's kind of like a self-healing uh, hole. 
but I wouldn't leave it like this overnight. I have seen silicone that's when it's left a certain way a long time, like I'm talking weeks and months, exposed to the fluctuating temperatures, it will reshape itself. So um, overnight, it's probably okay. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna cast this up and try to get this out of here as quickly as possible. Yes, this does damage the sculpture underneath. So if you're using this method to cast an existing form that's say porcelain or ceramic or bronze, you uh, are gonna scratch it up and dent it. So I have the clay form under here, which is not gonna be salvageable once this mold is finished. So I'm prepared for that. And it's okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, grease this up after I put that clay on there. It'll all get greased up and I'm just gonna start throwing some plaster on there. I'll do one layer of plaster. Then I'll put down the uh, fiberglass cloth and try to pull that apart a little bit to open up those uh, that space between there. So I'll do one layer of plaster and then this. I'll pat that all over and throw a second layer of plaster on there and it should be pretty good to go. And then once that's done, of course, I'll have all that out and then I can do that last section. And then we will drill the holes. And by the way, if this wall ends up not being high enough for holes, I still have this section that I can drill through. So it'll be bolted here, this one half, and this half it'll be bolted. But in order to keep this from flapping open like a book, that'll be pinched down there. So I know for sure that one, I'll be able to do that. So I'm not too worried if this seam doesn't close up because it'll be secured here and here and then down here. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is the first layer of plaster. <clears throat> The first, you know, the thing about like mixing plaster is it behaves differently with different ways of preparation. So when I mix this up, um, I didn't let it sit for one. So it sat for, you know, as long as it took me to put the cup back in the bucket and then I mix it up and um, I didn't go crazy. You know, I just mix it up enough that it was wet. And as I'm slapping it on there, you know, you got about 15 minutes and then it set up. So it was still soft, it's still soft, actually. But I knocked down the high edges, like there's like chunks sticking up like very badly. Anyway, I knocked those down and then that way I can lay my, uh, let's see, I use this piece here there as an example. Um, that way I can lay it down on top of it without this like huge lump underneath of it. Um, so for the next batch, when I mix it up, I will let it sit until that lake bed effect, you know, as I sift it, um, you'll start to see it crease that lake bed. We let it sit, 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 maybe 10 minutes. And I've had these batches, like if you let it sit for 10 minutes and where it just completely soaks and it looks like wet cotton, wet insulation, uh, you know, the spray and insulation. Um, and then you mix it up very nicely and you continue to mix it as you use it, I've had it last an hour or more. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do uh, for this next layer to make sure I've got it right where I want it. And uh, then when it starts to kick, I can slather it on and really start to smooth it out so it starts to look more like this. So that's where we're at. So I just wanna make a point of showing here that stuff like this isn't uh, a big deal. We can go back here and clean this up uh, after that dries, don't do it while it's wet, you'll smear it. But once it dries, you can uh, chip it right off. And then you can peel this off and grease these two sides and then get that started. There are some areas over here that I didn't get as thick as I wanted to before the plaster set. So I can go back there and when I'm working on this, jump back over and throw a little more on there. Um, if it gets too dry, I want to make sure that I hydrate it, you know, plenty well before I go back and cover up some of these areas. So we're almost there. I just wanted to share that. And so I got that cleaned up. I have all the clay peeled off. I pulled the nails out. 
And uh, as I mentioned before, it was self-healing, so they just kind of closed up. You can't even tell that they were there. And um, anyway, I have this all buttered up with Vaseline. And you can see how nice that looks. So what I'm going to do is uh, mix up a batch, throw down some plaster, that first layer. And then I'm going to go in with the second layer of plaster and put down some of the fiberglass cloth that I've pre-cut into pieces. And after we do that, we'll let it set overnight. And then I'll come back in here and drill the holes, uh, you know, to keep this together. I can put, hold that together with bolts and wing nuts. And uh, anyway, getting ahead of ourselves. There we go. Okay, so... You can see that I have this done now. Um, this here, don't worry about that. I know sometimes we like to have really pretty molds, but it's not a big deal. It's not gonna interfere with the function, of course. And you see I got a total mess down here. So um, after this cures, uh, say 24 hours or longer, um, I will take a saw or a, a sure form, like a rasp, and I'll just take that to this edge, you know, and really work this. Um, I will probably hit the fiberglass and um, the fiberglass then will kind of, you know, stick out and fray, you know, at the top. Uh, and, you know, if that bothers you, then I suggest maybe getting a cutting wheel of some sort, whether that's on an angle grinder or a Dremel and then just taking your time and walking through. You know, a uh, angle grinder, you can make short work of this, but you know, you wanna do it outside because it's gonna look like you kicked a bag of flour in your studio. So this here, a little easier, and then really you only need to go down as far as you need to to split the mold open, but make sure you get your, make sure you get your holes drilled where you want them. I like to take a marker and pre-mark ahead of time that way I don't find myself in a pickle wishing I had drilled back further. I can just map it out first, you know, it's kind of like uh, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. So, and uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, before I actually demold it too, I think what I'm going to do, because I want to put this in a rotational casting machine, especially because of this leg hanging down, is I'm going to put a, a, a bottom, like a wood board. A wooden uh, piece of wood there and it'll probably just be this maybe even this thing that it's sitting on and then I can drill a little plug in the bottom which I can pour in my uh, material medium whatever I decide to use and then I can make some type of plug to plug that and then I could you know have that strapped into a rotational casting machine so this is cured this is the next day uh, this stuff, by the way, is very drying uh, to the point where even like nitrile gloves will wear out pretty quickly. If you can get thicker gloves, all the better. If you want to use your skin, just be prepared that it's going to dry out pretty, pretty much. Okay. So have lotion. So I've used this to go down the side. It's taken some time. A little bit of elbow grease. Um, I did drill. I put a quarter inch drill bit. Ran it through the bottom uh, in case I elect to use this as the base, which I likely will. And uh, I took the marker, still see some traces of felt tip marker, permanent marker, Sharpie. So a uh, quarter inch drill bit, ran it through. And when you run it through, like I ran this one through at an angle as such, so that I know I can get the bolt through here. Uh, you know, if you drill it straight through like this, you won't be able to spin a wing nut uh, and you won't be able to feed the bolt in. So, you know, keep that in mind. So I got a, I don't have a hole down there. I need to drill that one yet. So I got that, that, these, and went around. And, um, you know, just keep going. And so now I'm just kind of wiping it off to help knock some of this stuff off. It's just a lot. And the particles should be big enough from sanding that uh, it'll fall out of the air pretty quickly. But, you know, it's still good to wear a mask because, you know, I don't know if this stuff is silica free or not, but you don't want to get silica particles in your lungs. Um, if you make this a practice, 
um, a long-term exposure to silica can cause um, chronic lung disease, which means you're not bouncing back from it. Okay, so I just want to say that w typically what I do when I cut um, silicone is I will say like this is my silicone. I'll put the blade down and say like this, the difference here between the gray and the black is my parting line, my desired parting line. Um, I will place it like this and then go back and forth as I drag so that the tip is staying on the line to the best of my ability. You see? So you end up having on the surface a pretty much straight parting line, but at the top you create a type of zipper effect because the knife is going back and forth, back and forth. And in, you know, in theory, and it works, I've proven it, uh, when you put your silicone back together and the fingers rest, you know, they don't have a tendency to just fall through like a straight cut. Sometimes these are too thin, and when you cut it, they just fall. They don't line up right. You have leakage and things like that, but when you create that zipper, they hang on each other better, and it creates a really nice um, casting. And then when you go on the inside to clean it up, you know, it's something that you can just knock down with the edge of the razor. You don't have to go in there and do a major edit. So. That's what I'm attempting to do here, um, but because I've used the business cards, I've already made a straight line, so I'm going to try to part this and then do that cut in between. So. So this, I just kept going around doing that pattern. You can see how, hopefully, you can see how this created a type of tooth effect. Um, I kind of had to work it in reverse, this side being the flat and this side being the inside because of uh, holding the cards that way. Uh, so anyway, this side came off, happy days. And this side I went down here because this wasn't hindsight, this is uh, a preference I made beforehand. I guess it could be hindsight in some ways. But the leg, I decided to leave it on so I could cast it in one piece. And uh, that created the complication with this, so I, I knew I was going to have to do that, so I left this bead sticking up. I went ahead and worked the knife through there, have that opened up. So hopefully we can get this uh, finished and molding this. Here's the back of it. Looks pretty good. And now I know I have some hooks. This is the Rebound 25 from Smooth On. There's a link in the description. And I don't know that I showed this, but I used um, Krylon Crystal Clear. It's an acrylic. I put a good coat of that on the clay before I applied the rubber. Not only does it make it cleaner, but it gives you a much uh, better surface quality of the mold so whatever you cast inside of it is going to have a more type of polished surface uh, versus the tooth of the clay. Do not use the polyurethane, you'll regret it. It's a 
tech tip. Okay, so sorry you didn't get to see the last part of it. Um, camera shut off. So this uh, is the inside, it came out. Um, this ended up being uh, thicker than I anticipated, which is fine. I was actually hoping it would be a little thicker there. Um, this is going to be good. Some areas where it's thin, I might get some uh, product trapped in there. That's okay. I can get in and clean that out later, or it's in a very inconspicuous area. That's why I couldn't get to it in the first place. It's going to work. So here's one half. And the foot comes out nice. And the other half. And those don't hold together. So what I have to do is get the mother mold pieces. And you remember this ribbing on the back. Now in theory that's that should go right into those slots and this projection nipple type thing that should stick in that slot pretty well to help add support and registration all these good things okay so that's one half of the mold and that does pretty good And you know, your first casting may not turn out. Don't be discouraged. You'll learn a lot from the first casting about your mold. So this is the mold fully put back together. I used the board that I cast the piece on. I just drilled some holes. So one, two, three, four. And just used some wing, wing nuts there to tighten that down. So it came back together. Um, I am building the rotational casting machine now and uh, I might drill a hole then in the bottom of this and create a plug. I could probably use like a plug for a sink or something of that nature and um, once it's in the rotational casting machine we'll be fine. But I just wanted to give a look here, a looky loo to the finished product of the mold. That looks like I forgot a bolt. So there we go. I wanted to take a moment too to open this up and show you guys what it looks like put back together. So even that, that board's a little beat up on the outside. Um, it was I was able to plot it out so I know where to drill my hole on this side. You can see the footprint of the original. The silicone has a tendency to grab the surface of the wood and clean it, like when you peel it off. So here we go. That's what it looks like from the negative view, the inside view, the internal view. And you can't see any seam lines in here. The way that I cut this, it goes back together that you're not going to see any seam lines. And it's evident too, because like here, this is where the actual seam is. Let's see if I can get that. Maybe you can, there you go. And this is great because that will create a, an almost flawless surface. Something that buyers, collectors, and maybe even your other artist peers aren't gonna see. And it's really kinda neat what the inside of these look like. So almost like an art form in itself. But you can see how I created the ribs on the inside, and those are keeping that up against this wall. That's keeping that nice and flat. That's very, very favorable. When this board is down, that'll kind of uh, flatten that out a little bit. But yeah, with this kind of showing that gap means that this is kind of curled up a little bit, curled in. So you might get a little spillover, but that's real, really simple to clean that up. So. Anyway, this is great. This is a really good mold. I can't wait to cast something in it. And uh, if you guys 
are interested in this kind of thing, you know, make sure you thumbs up, comment, let me know that this is what you're interested in seeing. If not, I'm just going to keep making what it is that uh, I'm interested in. And I'd be interested in making things that you're interested in too. So let me know. You guys, again, John Burns with John Burns Fine Art, signing out. Take care.